but Democrats joined Republicans in saying enough, these leaks must stop. Tonight, the White House finds itself in damage control mode after what a lot of pundits are calling one of the worst weeks for the administration, politically speaking, in three and a half years. Drip, drip, drip. What's with all this leaking during the first year of the Obama administration? What's doing it? Who's doing it? And what do they got the game? But this comes after explosive accusations that the White House leaked classified information to stop Israel from attacking Iran. Officials are accused of telling Hollywood filmmakers too much about the raid that killed Osama bin Laden. From our earliest days, we have recognized those who led our fight for freedom. Throughout our history, these brave men and women have put their lives on the line for us, our families, and our future. They made a pledge to fight for us, and for the freedoms and liberties that define us as a nation. Many paid the ultimate price. My name is Debbie Lee, and I'm the very proud mother of Mark Allen Lee, who was the first Navy SEAL that was killed in Iraq on August 2nd, 2006. He willingly gave his life so that they could live, and so that we could experience the freedoms that we have here and that our founding fathers intended for us to have. I miss that young man so much, but I know where he is. He was redeployed to heaven, and I will see him again. We honor their service, their sacrifice, their victories in combat were not cheap. They certainly were not automatic. And virtually without exception, success depended on having the right intelligence to know where, when, and how best to strike. All military operations uh, are, are depend entirely on, on intelligence. No one commits troops uh, blindly in the field. It hasn't been done since the days of Napoleon, and even then, intelligence was, was necessary. Uh, intelligence nowadays is, is, is crucial just to get the authorization to do even the most minor operation. You need intelligence to be able to identify your target. The capabilities of your enemy, and to determine how you're going to operate against the enemy. It's the foundation of everything. Good intelligence is the difference between wasting lives on a mission or getting a mission done to the exact specification as ordered to achieve. The intelligence is the paramount. Intelligence is key to ensuring your operation is going to be a successful one. If you don't have good intelligence, you're probably not going to succeed. Techniques and technology have changed through the years, but two things have remained constant. First, human intelligence, penetrating the plans and operations of the enemy with real people, not just equipment, is central and critical. It all starts with that human intelligence, who said what to who, what's that lead, um, and, and, and following one person, sometimes for years, until they lead you to where you want to go. Human intelligence is the most important kind of intelligence because it is the only intelligence that can provide you with the thinking of leadership. All the technical intelligence you have out there is not going to be able to give you what's in the minds of the leaders and enemies. That can only come from human intelligence. Keeping secrets matters. It's called operational security, OPSEC for short. Never let the enemy know of your intentions, your operations. Maintaining OPSEC means the difference between a successful mission and failure. And when OPSEC is violated, our enemies gain the upper hand. As soon as you let anybody know what you have, change their tactics if they're using a certain tactic, or uh, change what direction they were heading.
There's a cost for our leaders grabbing for glory. Politics should never come before national security. Every time you, you leak intelligence like that, you lose assets. Some assets are just no longer usable. Other assets are actually uh, found by, the, by our, our enemy and eliminated. These are the experts on the subject, the people who have spent much of their lives in military and intelligence operations. They know what they are talking about, and they have had enough. They've come together to make sure Americans understand what's going on and what's at stake, protecting operational security. Their mission? Stop the politicians from politically capitalizing on U.S. national security operations and secrets. Remember May 2nd, 2011. Americans learned that Osama bin Laden had been eliminated. How did we learn about it? Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden. I directed Leon Panetta, the director of the CIA, to make the killing or capture of bin Laden the top priority of our war against al-Qaeda. I met repeatedly with my national security team. I determined that we had enough intelligence at my direction. I directed, I directed, I directed, I directed. I directed. Uh, that was kind of infuriating to a lot of folks, especially those who've been in the, been in the fight. Uh, they didn't, this administration didn't capture or kill or eliminate bin Laden or, or anybody else. There's a whole lot of folks in the military and intelligence community who've been working on this for a very long time. Mr. President, you did not kill Osama bin Laden. America did. The work that the American military has done killed Osama bin Laden. You did not. So for someone to sit around in a support position and say, we killed Osama bin Laden, No, you didn't. You, you, you had nothing to do with it. There was a finite amount of people who could make that claim, and that's the guys who were on the target. And the politicians just don't get it, that serving our country is above politics. I was appalled first to hear the secrets that I've spent over 25 years protecting. <sighs> Cover name of a unit, the actual name of a special mission unit and the location of a special mission unit all reported within the same sentence. Not only did, not only did they identify the special mission unit, we had tactics, techniques, and procedures that were compromised. We even knew the name of the dog that was on the operation. I mean, the raid on Osama bin Laden was a very complicated event. It, it entailed a lot of very, very sensitive methods. I mean, start with the helicopter. All of this was compromised. And in this, in this particular case, it was, it was done deliberately. I mean, moments, moments after the raid, it was announced. Killing bin Laden had been a goal for years, but the politicians turned that victory into an intelligence disaster. I think we were all glad to hear that Osama bin Laden was killed, uh, but I think many of us would step and say, well, why didn't we wait a week or two weeks or wait some amount of time to exploit the intelligence you got out of that compound? The question then surfaced shortly after the announcement was, should it have been announced when it was? Now the bad guys knew we got bin Laden, so it wouldn't take long for that information to get out. But unfortunately, the early announcement of that also defeated our ability to exploit any of the intelligence we might have gathered at bin Laden's compound. Computer files, paper files, any number of other things might have been found there. So as soon as the word got out, we had a bunch of rats scurrying to hide. And we might have had a little more opportunity to get some more had that announcement been held even for a day or two. I think that the disclosure of specific details of the raid, how we got there, how many people that we used, what were the tactics to, to conduct the mission itself and what we did afterwards. I believe that a 10-year-old would be able to understand that if you disclose how we got there, 
how we took down the building, what we did, how many people were there, that it's going to hinder future operations and certainly hurt the success of, the, of those future operations for, for DOD, for military, for intelligence community and everybody as a whole. And what about the people who put their lives on the line to help us eliminate Osama bin Laden? What happened when the administration made it public? Who was on our side? We've had enough uh, difficulty. Re recruiting sources is never an easy thing to begin with, particularly in, in today's environment. Uh, but one of the most important things that, that any intelligence operator must do is protect that source. And with wanton disregard, this administration leaked information, deliberately or otherwise, that led to the identification of the Pakistani doctor that helped us in achieving our goals in killing bin Laden. That makes it almost impossible to recruit other human sources. Worse than ever are leaks coming out of the White House. I'm not sure we have anybody in senior leadership today that understands the propriety and how risky it is on leaks. Now, as a result of the recent leaks, just in the last year, we've had a Pakistani doctor who gave us information on bin Laden, 33 years in prison. What was done was stupid. But it was more than stupid because it was done with malice of forethought. It was done for a political purpose. And that's what I, f I find terrible. Days after the raid, Hollywood was invited into the White House. so that they could receive a briefing on exactly how the raid took place. What kind of sources we had, what kind of methods we used, all for the purpose of making a Hollywood movie. And somewhere in this administration, perhaps at the highest levels, there are people who don't understand what the requirements are that are put on everybody else. When we divulge national security information, such as the identity the organization that killed Osama bin Laden, we have now put all of those men, all of their families, everybody around them at some sort of risk. And when is the payback going to come? Well, it didn't come immediately. It might not come this week. It might not come next year. But be assured, we have a lot of enemies out there. Not content to go for political gain at the time, the administration decided to double down a year later, to take a victory lap to try and get more political advantages, and airing a campaign commercial about the raid. We have become a political weapon. We are not. Our job is to be silent professionals. We do not seek recognition. We do not seek popularity. I feel really badly for our US Navy SEALs and particularly SEAL Team 6 who conducted the Bin Laden raid. They were identified. And now you can believe that we have enemies that are trying to identify them. It has placed them and their families at risk and anybody that thinks it hasn't is being naive. But the leaks did not end with the bin Laden raid. A recent series of intelligence leaks has been bombarding the airwaves. Even the president's political friends know this is not right. One recent leak exposed a joint intelligence operation of the United States and Israel that developed a computer worm known as the Stuxnet worm, a very powerful program capable of shutting down sophisticated computer systems. And we made good use of it, stopping the Iranians and setting their operations back by years. The Sputznet thing, it worked. It was a good thing. It may have denied the, the Iranians from getting their nuclear capability for a year or two years or whatever it is. It worked. It was a good deal. It was a good operation. Why the hell talk about it? This administration willfully leaked the existence of Stuxnet, allowing our enemies to learn more of our secrets and our operations. Why would anyone do this? What is the cost of trading national secrets for political capital? When we stand up and admit that we were part of putting Stuxnet together with our Israeli friends, we have really undermined our ability, one, to have the Israelis or anybody else work with us on the technology side, and secondly, we've made it very clear to the Iranians who did it and who they need to be coming back to pay back. We live in a dangerous world, but does it do us any good when it becomes public that the President of the United States has a kill list? That he, personally, 
is approving firing drone missiles. Kill lists. I mean, that's that's part of the whole giving out of things that are against secret and quiet, and things you don't talk about. But as in to make things public is, is wrong. We have divulged to the world that we're using drone technology and conducting strikes in, inside of uh, different countries. And we've also divulged to the world uh, via this, this administration at a very high level, obviously, that the president himself has a kill list and that he's making the decision as to, as to who will be killed by these drones. Drones aren't like nuclear weapons in the sense that they're difficult to hide. Uh, the proliferation of drone technology is very easy. It's easy to do. It's, uh, other countries already have drones. Other countries are building drones. So I think that we set a, a, bad, a, a profoundly bad precedent by making these decisions and leaking that information that the president himself is using drone technology and deciding on who will die. These experts, these heroes who have served their country, risked their lives, have had enough. They know the time to act is now. As a citizen, it is my civic duty to tell the president to stop leaking information to the enemy. It will get Americans killed. The accumulation of all the, and the consistency of these very high level leaks, again, really at number one, puts our military members, potentially their family, other civilians, their support personnel, at risk and at safety and potentially of death because of these leaks. Uh, on top of that, you have folks from other countries understand and will, will move and change their tactics to combat our tactics based upon these leaks that were disclosed. It's just not the way that the military does business and I believe that at the very highest levels that they should be held accountable for it. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I mean, I, I don't come from that culture. I, I, I'm not a political guy. I don't come from that culture. I don't see, I don't see why anybody would purposely put lives in jeopardy. Protecting military secrets has been paramount to our country from its earliest time. The leaks by this administration have violated the trust established over the last 200 years. Mr. President, to you and those close to you that hold some of the nation's highest secrets, please be quiet about it. With all due respect, Mr. President, we need you to close your lips and to shut up when it comes to operational security regarding our armed forces. It's critical for you as a leader to understand that and what the SEALs say, we do it, we don't talk about it. I was recently at a military installation uh, speaking with former colleagues and told them about what we were doing and what our goals were. To, to maintain uh, a standing watchdog organization that would prevent any politician from exploiting military gains for political secrets. And they all said, you've got to do this. You've got to speak because we can't. We have thousands, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people in the intelligence community and our military. They deserve to have us speak on their behalf. They can't. They are prohibited from doing it. They might even get fired. It's one of the reasons I'm appearing anonymously here, because I still have friends and associates that are working within the intelligence community, and I still have some activities that I support with the military, and I risk jeopardizing those things and my friends and the people I care about that are doing their best to protect this country. That's the reason why I'm appearing in this way. Duty. Honor. Country. Values fought for by our heroes, selflessly and without thoughts of glory or recognition, while protecting the freedoms that make America the guiding light around the world. We've got to stand up. This is our country, this is our constitution. And we have to speak out. Finally, we have to speak out and say, we will not take this anymore. Enough is enough. If I had one piece of advice for this administration, it would be the same thing that former Secretary of Defense Bob Gates said. Shut the up.
Our organization, OPSEC, or short for Operational Security, consists of Special Forces, Delta Force, Marines, Navy SEALs, folks from the intelligence community, and I think it's been it's been great to have a coalition of folks that are coming out and speaking out because they're able to, to have a voice and lend their voice to the active duty men and women who are over there overseas fighting for us right now. And we're here to, to speak out against the release of national security secrets that could potentially put our, our brothers and sisters and their families in harm's way. You can also join these heroes and their operation to protect our military secrets. If you agree with our message that politicians shouldn't carelessly disclose national security secrets, then tell your friends, post on your Facebook, your Twitter, get the word out, because this is important for our national security, for our country, and for our future.